Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Lurcher from uh, Professor at San Jose State uh, uh, School of Information. And today I am most delighted to welcome Dr. Melanie Sanchez to our interview. And so, uh, Melanie, uh, introduce yourself and your school. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Melanie Sanchez. I work at Mount Harmony Elementary in Owings, Maryland. Um, I pulled the attendance today because it changes constantly. We have 615 um, phenomenal students that um, keep me motivated and keep me on my toes. Um, we are an ESOL school, so we are one of our district um, um, schools where um, we have students that come from all backgrounds and we love that immensely. Um, and we learn from them just as much as we teach them. So we are a bedroom community for DC, Annapolis, Baltimore, um, Fort Meade is very close, uh, Pax River is close. So um, we are a rural area that is surrounded by um, more of an urban area. Wow. So um, today we're going to kind of zero in on your contribution to instruction. Tell me about these fabulous uh, community projects you do. Well, it, it started because um, I, I love learning and I'm never good enough for my kids. And um, when I got my doctorate, it was because I, um, I knew it was in leadership and changing populations. And I knew that I was not well enough equipped to meet the needs of diverse learners. And so that's where that came from. Um, and then after that, I attained my library certification because I figured out it was a great way to um, help administration meet their goals and you know address the needs of every educator in the building. So then after I decided um, to get my library certification, I knew I still wanted to keep learning. And my husband said, that's enough. <laughs> We're not taking out any loans. We're not paying for any more school. And I discovered teacher institutes. And so when I, um, some of the institutes I've attended are NEH, Ford's Theater, Williamsburg, uh, Mount Vernon, um, et cetera. And I started meeting really motivating teachers in those in those experiences. And, you know, they say, you know, when the mask drops in an airplane, you're supposed to put your mask on first, you're supposed to give yourself the oxygen first, so you can then tend to those that you care for. And I think that is true with our education um, of our librarians and our teachers, right? We need to continually give ourselves that oxygen that motivates us to keep learning and being ready for our kids. So I started attending those institutes and I realized that attending them was great, but how would I then make them come alive? And so I had attended a Gilder Learman Institute in New York City about the American Revolution. And I coordinated with them and they have exhibits that you can get to come to your school because although right. no matter where you live, children don't always have the opportunity to visit places. We are not very far from the Smithsonian. But most parents who work in the city don't want to return to the city for those kinds of experiences. And so even though we're close, I found that bringing these exhibits into the school was great. But bringing the exhibit wasn't enough. I had to make those exhibits come alive. And so um, we hosted, our first night was Hamilton night. And of course, that was very popular. Um, we had a student who danced to Hamilton songs and, you know, put some of the music together. We had kindergartners who sang songs. We had fifth graders who did a wax museum. Um, the community was invited and we had about 400. I then started, I then attended an institute at Mount Vernon and I decided to partner Gilder Learman, Mount Vernon and Williamsburg. And we had Washington night. We had 800 people attend and had to change the program on the spot. <laughs> Thankfully, the fire marshal was not one of our parents, um, <laughs> but we had school board members, we had community members, and we had 800 people attend, and our kids in the Wax Museum, again, were historical figures. Um, there was a treasure hunt to go from exhibit um, piece to exhibit piece. It wasn't all together. It was throughout the school building, and, um, you know, it was just a night of so much excitement where history truly came alive, um, and I worked with the music teacher, the art teacher. Um, you know, many people came together to make that happen. Um, and Mount Vernon hosted, you know, free tickets for um, some of our kids to then attend Mount Vernon. So wow. it just was a real community event where you just started pulling the people that you knew and the experts, right? You surround yourself with people who are experts and they help you do these things. So those are just some examples of some of the events we've had. And I'm, I'm getting ready. So if anyone can help me out um, to prepare for um, a Frederick Douglass night. And I've started with the Gilder Learman 
and working with them and they have a brand new exhibit. So I'm super excited um, to start planning that and working with um, some of our um, committees with our PTA. They're excited to help with it as well. You'll have to have a, a bigger football field or something to handle all the crowds that come. <laughs> it's a beautiful problem. <laughs> right. We all wish that. So uh, tell me about other projects that you kind of push out into the other uh, uh, curriculum of the school. Um, well, one of the things that I absolutely love is that um, I work with the Maryland Association of School Librarians, and we have a Black Eyed Susan um, committee for different levels of books, and the picture books are one that I, I do a lot of. And so we actually worked with the PTA, and we had a Black Eyed Susan week, and um, the kids read all the books, um, they voted for the books um, individually, and then came the big vote. And so I have students who can tell you about why a Black Eyed Susan book is good, why it was the state winner, you know, all those kinds of things where they really take ownership in those pieces. And so I worked with the PTA, I worked with the Maryland Association of School Librarians, and then my kids took that ownership role. I also had a fifth grade group that um, previewed books for nominees, like what should we nominate? Oh, and wow. so my kids are always saying, look, look, do you see what this is? It's a Black Eyed Susan. That means it's a really good book. It's a guarantee. And so working with the state association is a big part of something that has made me a successful librarian um, and networking with other incredible, um, well-versed librarians who really uh, up the ante and, and have a high bar. But that is an example of one thing. Another thing that um, I was able to participate in, and again, it goes back to those um, institutes for teachers and extending that education and going deeper. Um, I was fortunate enough to be a Fulbright scholar and I went to France this past June and it was delayed. It was, you know, everybody knows that the pandemic um, made our lives more interesting with a brand new schedule and the ability to pivot <laughs> repeatedly. But we were in Paris, we were in Normandy and we were in Bordeaux. And so I was able to really focus on making my library a more globally um, aware library, looking at different books, those kinds of things, partnering that with the Black Eyed Susan Committee, those kinds of things. And my students were then able to really understand what, you know, that they have a global impact on society and things like that. So we looked at schools, not only in France, but schools in Japan um, and those kinds of things and looked at their school day and our school day. And it was fun to compare what we'd like to do that they have, like, you know, an hour lunch sounds lovely, um, you know, like some of the other schools, as well as what are some of the things that we really appreciate that we're fortunate, not fortunate enough to have where we live. So I was able to pull in, you know, a real global focus, as well as the sustainable developmental goals um, from the United Nations. Um, and one of the big ones that is my Fulbright project is, um, life below water and so we have the chesapeake bay so i'm pulling in things with the chesapeake bay foundation as well as fulbright as well as um, the united nations sustainable developmental goals and my kids are are all a part of that right like how exciting is that to go home and say what did you do today well we talked about the sustainable developmental goals <laughs> They're very proud. so describe a typical school day in your library from dawn to dark what does it look like act like feel like um, the thing I love so much about my job, this is only my seventh year in the library, so um, please know that, you know, I'm consciously unskilled. Um, however, I'm going to do everything possible um, to, to get better all the time, right? So uh, in the morning, I'm often um, helping um, teachers, educators, the principal um, get supplies, things they need for their day, looking up information. I then teach six classes per day. It is a ton of fun. It is never boring. It is high energy. Sometimes I feel like a firefighter, not because it's a crisis, but because it's that exciting. So, you know, you have your first class enter. Welcome, boys and girls. Today, this is what we're doing. Come in, come in, come in. We learn, we look at databases, we look at internet safety, we look at coding. It, it depends on, you know, what the given topic is for that day. Oh, and then we need to check out books. You have 10 minutes. Go, go, go. Find your best book. And then, okay, goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you in seven days. I'll miss you till then. Okay, ready? Next class. And so I do that six times a day for all ages. And to see them when they, they wait in line, um, we have like a, a strange setup at our school, they walk through the copy room and they wait in line. And there, you, you see this nervous energy, because they know that it is a safe place 
It is a special place and it is a place where they can learn whatever they want about anything that they're passionate about, which means they are often my teacher, right? Um, you know, they help me choose books, those kinds of things. And so that alone is so exciting. And then when they're leaving, they're happy because they have their books, but they're not coming back for seven days, you know, and they'll say, when can I see you? Is there another way to come <laughs> to the library? And I do work with the public library very closely um, to have other programs such as um, we have book clubs and things with the public library. But how exciting is that, that that hub for them means so much? Yeah. So that that is absolutely wonderful. So what as you, as you work with these kind of students, uh, what do you think, uh, what, what impact are you having on them as learners and what, what's your experience? I mean, I mean, you have a doctorate, so I know, I know you're interested in the kind of research. So uh, what impact are you, uh, do you start experiencing as you do all this stuff? Um, one, of, one of my passions is the national parks. And so this past summer I went, um, Expeditions in Education is a phenomenal teacher opportunity for STEAM, right? So you're looking at, at those kinds of things. And I always integrate teaching my kids about the national parks. And I've been, I think we counted to 23, which is not even a debt that I've like, I, I want so many more. But as I go to these national parks, I share with my students. And that year I had shared um, that I'd been to Sequoia National Park and we were comparing the redwoods to the sequoias. And I had a parent contact me and they said, what was this lesson about the redwoods and the sequoias? And I explained, and she said, well, we had a trip planned to Disney, but my, my kids don't wanna go there anymore. They wanna go to the Sequoia National Park. And wow. that family canceled Disney. We love Disney, there's nothing wrong with Disney, but they canceled Disney and they went to a national park to explore that because of a library lesson. Right. That meant so much to me, right? So is that measurable on a test? I don't know. Is traveling to a place like that and seeing, you know, the most immense trees on earth significant? I would argue that it is, right? Yeah. So you can learn something and then you can actually go and experience it. And, and that's something I love about, you know, the STEAM component in the library as well. We have a huge science expo every um, February in our county. And that is where we pull together elementary, middle and high school students. My Girls Who Code Club goes and shadows the high school um, students who are doing their coding piece. And then the community sees how many amazing things are happening in our buildings. Right. Um, and that network of where our students can then go. Um, so we also work, um, we've had the Career Center um, principal come in and talk about, if you like coding, this is actually what you can do with it and the careers you can have. And my mm -hmm. students are, you see their seeds being planted, right? Like things that they never had even considered. And yet you say, well, they're very young, you know, they're only K to five. I promise you those seeds are significant. But I'm also impressed with you I mean, tell us about this doctor. What was his topic? And then tell us about your hubby. And, and what is all this preparation? Why for an elementary school librarian? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, my kids humble me, right? There's not a day that goes by where they ask me something and I say, oh, let's find out. I don't know, right? You're my teacher now. Um, so my doctor, and I, I, I grabbed my uh, dissertation. So I want you to know it is real. <laughs> It really is a dissertation, <laughs> and um, the title of it, it, it was through Notre Dame of Maryland University, which is who I teach for. So this is my 20th year of teaching teachers. Um, and again, why do I do that? I do that to keep myself honest and to keep inspiring future educators to, to join us in the field. Uh, but the title of my uh, dissertation was Perspectives of African-Americans in Rural Maryland, our public elementary schools meeting the needs of our African-American students' needs. It was a long title, but I needed to know that because I had a feeling that the data was one piece, but most of the data was urban data. And that's not who we are. We are a rural community between Annapolis, DC, you know, Baltimore that um, has families that are very old in our county and have been here two or 300 years. And then we have families that are constantly coming in and out based on economics and, you know, very often a military piece. And so I wanted to know directly um, from our African-American community, how are we doing? And are we paying attention to the things that matter? And so some of the things that I found, you know, they were appreciative of the school buildings. Um, we had great comprehensive programs with a lot of opportunities um had a lot of you know resources and those kinds of things those things they were they were happy about but I, I i pulled this the things that they were concerned about 
and it, it was it was interesting because it helped me see that although sometimes our perspectives are very different and our experiences are very different, we definitely can stand shoulder to shoulder on concerns, right? We may not see eye to eye in every single thing, but we definitely can stand shoulder to shoulder right. in honor of our kids. Um, a caring environment was at the top of their list. That was non-negotiable. Yeah, we needed to make sure we saw every single student that entered our building, right? Saw them right. as they're exactly who they are, bringing all their gifts and all their strengths. And if we didn't know them, we needed to find out what they were. And um, then you are married to? My husband is Hispanic, he's Mexican. So I, my very first job was in Acapulco, Mexico, where I was a nanny. And then I went back and my, my first teaching job was um, teaching English um, in Mexico. And if I came to dinner tonight, you'd probably cook Thai together and speak only Chinese during the, the uh, dinner time, right? We do love Thai food. We love Chinese food tonight. It's nachos, but you are more than welcome to go. <laughs> so uh, what's your advice to uh, uh, school principals and superintendents that would like to get a treasure like yourself? How would they get started? And how do they, how do they make this happen? Yeah, and, and you know, that's a huge concern. This past summer, I attended some um, institutes, um, Wild Heart Teacher in Colorado and um, Expeditions in Education. And I spoke to many, um, some principals and some other teachers and many of them had absolutely no representation either in a library or they had a library that was kind of old and dusty and someone sometimes checked out books, right? And so I thought to myself, how could this happen, right? Did, did we have people who grew up without libraries and didn't even know the richness and the strength that they were missing, right? So, so you know, why, why are libraries important in a school? Well, I can promise you they are the glue of the school, right? So there are times where I help administratively. There are times where I support, um, you know, students individually in what they need. Um, I definitely am a huge connector of your community along with your school district, along with your neighborhoods, right? So the beauty of it is that no day in my job ever looks the same. And pretty much whatever you ask me to do is as long as it's legal and helpful and meets kids needs, I'm, I'm going to find a way either to resource it and help you find someone else who can help you do that. Or I'm, or I'm going to be a part of that given team. So to say that as someone who checks out books it, it, it is, is, is this much of my job. Um, it, it, I'm more someone who helps kids be on fire for learning, who helps yeah. students find a safe place to be, who helps students. For some kids, that's why they come to school. You know, I had a little guy the other day, he was leaving the library. It was his second visit to the library. And I said, you know, bye, I'll, I'll see you in seven days. And he looked at me and he said, bye. <laughs> and it was instantaneous. It, he didn't plan that, right? But he <laughs> felt that good about the things we were learning, the fun we had, and, and his representation of being a part of that library community. And here's the other piece. That's not just for the students. That's for every teacher in the building. And I promise you, they need more support than ever. They are coming to me. I wish I had a sign that said five cents, advice not guaranteed, <laughs> right? I can't guarantee advice, but I am here to listen to you. I'm here to get supplies for you. I'm here to connect you. You know, you're, you're doing this activity and you need some support with it. Did you know about this, right? So I also write grants. Um, you know, I've written about, and it's not a huge number, but for me as a librarian, I'm, I'm proud of it. I've, I have written, um, I guess I'm up to about $18,000 worth of grants, you know, where you bring things to the schools. Um, I wrote a grant for Leadership Maryland, where we um, worked with the Teacher Academy of Maryland because we have a teacher shortage. And we had our eighth graders and ninth graders, 120 of them um, come to the local community college. They listened to the Maryland Teacher of the Year. And um, we talked about what is it like to be a teacher? And then the colleges came and they talked to colleges at, the, at those young ages. Why? We're planting seeds, remember? So, you know, if you're looking for someone to partner with you in all your initiatives, and, you know, it, it's, it's academics, it's social emotional, right. it's safety, all of those things. Right. That's what a librarian does, you know? And I would argue that no librarian in my county has the exact same approach, the exact same skills. And that's the beauty of it. You, you know, you find a librarian who is, is highly skilled and who is passionate about every single part of the, every element in your school building. 
Thank you so very much. You are amazing. And I hope that uh, everyone will find a person just like you to be a, a great leader in a school library. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm lucky. I, I say I get to be a librarian. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>